This is your WXEO Daily News Roundup for Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 FM and 1230 AM in Wausau. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. The former warden at the Wapun State Prison is waiving his preliminary hearing. Randall Hepp's lawyer is also withdrawing a motion to have a felony charge of misconduct dismissed. Eight other former prison employees also face charges for allegedly mistreating inmates. People are speaking out about long-running problems at Wisconsin State Prisons. Cindy Sherwin is a former prison guard who was let go after 27 years. She says it was retaliation for whistleblowing. As soon as Act 10 went into place, the supervisors and administration, from my experience, became their own higher powers. The Assembly's Corrections Committee held a hearing yesterday after several guards were charged in the recent deaths of two inmates. Rebecca Aubart's husband is doing time at the Stanley Prison. There isn't capital punishment in Wisconsin, and people are dying. Former staffers described sexual harassment and retaliation by supervisors, and former inmates talked about being denied food and medicine. Communities which lost their two-year University of Wisconsin branch campuses can now get up to $2 million in grants. The legislature's Joint Finance Committee released the money yesterday. Six two-year campuses are closed or plan to close soon. Leaders blame lower enrollment and budget cuts. Expanded Amtrak service in Wisconsin is a hit with passengers. More than 18,500 people rode the Borealis trains between St. Paul and Chicago during its first month of running. That's about 300 passengers each trip. Marriage equality is making gay people happier and healthier. That's according to a new study from UCLA. Abby Goldberg is a psychology professor who says same-sex relationships are stronger and more secure. They have access to health insurance. They are physically and mentally healthier. They're able to share the challenges and work of raising children. The same study finds 80% of same-sex couples are concerned politicians and courts could take their rights away. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WXCO News, I'm Brittany Merlot. A Wausau area woman that was being trafficked in lacrosse escaped by calling her fiancé. 28-year-old Chantel Kibler was charged on Monday in La Crosse County Circuit Court. The criminal complaint filed against her provided details of how a young woman was brought from the Wausau area, where she lived, to La Crosse and sex trafficked around the area. The victim told police that she had lost drug dealing money for a man identified as Dre Broadnax. He brought her to La Crosse in June to traffic her until she paid off the drug debt. The victim said that during the time that she was around Broadnax, she said he pointed a gun at her approximately 20 times and threatened her. The victim gave all of the money she was paid to Kibler who the victim believed then gave it to Broadnax. Investigators arrested Kibler on July 1st. Kibler appeared for a hearing last Wednesday where she was given a $500,000 cash bond. And Kibler returns to court next week. And police are still looking for Broadnax. Wisconsin drivers will have more than just speed traps to keep them driving safely this week. It's Trooper and a Truck Week, where law enforcement ride inside semi-trucks and buses to have a higher vantage point to see you texting and driving. An EAA Air Venture 2024 takes to Whitman Airport in Oshkosh in less than two weeks. Bringing in an estimated 600,000 people to the area, Dick Napinski is the Director of Communications for EAA Air Venture. This is the time where we're about 80% done and it feels like you've got 80% to go because you're sitting there and a lot of the big things are checked off the list. But there's a million little things, everything from... You know, are the trash containers here yet? And these golf carts, those aren't the golf carts we want. And we need these golf carts. You know, those type of things start coming in. Air Venture takes place from Monday, July 22nd to Sunday, July 28th in Oshkosh. If you look around, knee-high by the 4th of July is tough to find. This time a year ago, we were in the middle of a drought, and farmers are basically trying to adapt to a roller coaster now. Farmers say that this is one of the worst years that they can remember. With all of the extra rain, it's delaying their chance to harvest. Farmers say crops themselves often just aren't as good in these conditions. And a new music festival is coming to Kadat next year, called Force Fields. Debuting June 6th and 7th of 2025, this will be an EDM experience, which stands for Electronic Dance Music, otherwise known as Club Music. The event will be held at the Rock Fest and Country Festival grounds in the Chippewa Valley. And if you didn't hear, Country Fest has a new name, Hoofbeat. 
They made the announcement and change just a few weeks ago. That concert is scheduled for June 26th through the 28th, with Lainey Wilson already set to headline in 2025. Taste and Glow is just a few days away, and it's the start of a new era. For the first time ever, they'll have a professional drone show, as well as new food vendors and new balloons. In fact, this year, there will only be 17 hot air balloons, but all of them are going to be from out of state. Taste and Glow takes place this Friday and Saturday. And eight hunters in Wisconsin will be able to hunt elk during the 2024 elk season this year. The DNR announcing the winners said that four hunters are able to hunt in the Black River elk zone for the first time since elk were reintroduced to the state. Over 25,000 applications were submitted between April 10th through May 31st. In the Clam Lake elk zone, the winning applicants are from Green Bay, Madison, Hortonville, and Birchwood. For the Black River elk zone, the four hunters are from Athens, Toma, the Waupon area, and Wisconsin. Wisconsin Rapids. The elk hunting season opens Saturday, October 12th. And that's what you need to know. I'm Brittany Merlot for WXCO. The Brewers get clobbered at home. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. It was one of the worst losses of the year. The Pirates beat the Brewers 12-2. to Pittsburgh with five home runs in the game, including a grand slam by the Pirates catcher, Joey Bart, in front of over 26,000 fans at American Family Field. Manager Pat Murphy, after the debacle. We haven't had one of those games in a while, especially at home. We have, we've been in every single game. I, I bragged to everybody about being in 85 and 90 games. But credit to the Pirates, they did a great job took us out of it not gonna win a lot of games or five or six hits the two teams playing again tonight closer devin williams making progress throwing to live batters during warm-ups he's coming back from stress fractures in his back nba the bucks have added former detroit pistons guard stanley umude six foot six appeared in 28 games for detroit racing brad Mueller named the winner at the slinger nationals early this morning after andrew morrissey disqualified because his car did not beat standard measurements with sports I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Have you had explosive diarrhea when staying at a celebrity's house? If so, you are not alone. Apparently, Ozempic is causing tubby rich people to themselves. The most recent incident took place at Gwyneth Paltrow's house, where, according to Paltrow, her friend and socialite Derek Blasberg had two rooms worth of diarrhea. Blasberg apparently the bed and the bathroom. Then, instead of fessing up, ran like a thief in the night and got himself the H-E double hockey sticks out of town without facing the consequences for his paint job. At least his friend Gwyneth had his back and only told a handful of really famous people, like Oprah, Larry David, and Jerry and Jessica Seinfeld, that Blasberg blamed it on Ozempic, but that it was really just a good old-fashioned blowout. I will say it can be very intimidating being in a celebrity's house and can really loosen things up down there. Poor guy, that is something one never lives down, I'm told. The important thing to remember is If you crash at a famous person's crib, always have a change of clothes, a litter box, or depends. Miranda Priestly is headed back to the big screen. Disney is developing a Devil Wears Prada sequel, according to Variety. Meryl Streep played Priestly, a boss who made the lives of her assistants, played by Anne Hathaway and Emily Blunt, a living hell. Details about returning cast are scarce, but sources say the plot of the new film will center around Priestly, butting heads with Blunt's character, who is now a high-powered fashion executive herself. The news breaks just as a live musical of the story is set to open on London's West End end in October. Leonardo DiCaprio came to the rescue of a fellow Hamptons partier. The Oscar-winning actor saw a drunk person leaving a party and came to the aid of the inebriated man. According to a fellow partygoer, DiCaprio helped the man steady himself on a pole and told the man to stay there. Page Six reports that the drunk guy obeyed the orders of the famous actor. There's no word yet if the man is still clinging to the pole or if he was Justin Timberlake. John Cena has announced he is retiring from professional wrestling. Cena, a 16-time WWE champion, first made a name for himself in the early 2000s as rapper The Doctor of Thugonomics and recently appeared naked behind a suspiciously small piece of cardboard at the Oscars. The Ricky Stenicki star says he will focus more on acting but will give wrestling fans a farewell tour and that he's just physically at the end. Making Cena even cooler is that he will host Discovery's Shark Week 2024. Willie Nelson received a warm welcome on July 4th in Camden, New Jersey, his first appearance after a health scare. According to the New York Post, the 91-year-old music legend took the stage at his annual 4th of July picnic event after having had to take a musical knee for a couple of weeks due to doctor's orders. Nelson performed two shows in Wisconsin in mid-May in Madison and Milwaukee. He is back with the Outlaw Music Festival Tour, performing with Bob Dylan, Robert Plant, and Alison Krauss. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. An isolated shower or thunderstorm possible later today and again tomorrow. Otherwise, partly cloudy today with a high of 82 this afternoon. We'll drop down to 60 tonight, sunny 81 tomorrow. 
and temps are going to keep climbing. We're talking mid to upper 80s by the weekend. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it's 69. That's your WXCO Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at bullfallsradio.com.